Now over to the Big Apple to learn more about these performers' passion for the arts. <laughs> I'm Ruben Blaze, Ruben Blades, also the me in Latin America. I'm Luba Mason, and we are in Chelsea, New York. Ruben and Luba are both acclaimed musicians and actors. Yo soy el cantante. multiply, I'll be dreamy. Ruben is a nine-time Grammy winner, a master of salsa and Latin jazz, and has a long list of film and television roles, including the post-apocalyptic horror drama Fear the Walking Dead. And for over 30 years, Luba has been performing on Broadway, most recently starring in Girl from the North Country. While devoting their professional lives to the performing arts, offstage, they enjoy collecting art. What I look for in a piece of art is um, something that creates an impact on me. It catches my eye. We also look for the hunt, yeah. you know, kind of like the diamond in the rough, or go, you know, you're kind of like going through some paintings, they're just like stacked on the floor. Looking for that Monet that somebody yeah. forgot. A long life in show business has inspired Ruben and Luba to acquire art connected to their careers, some of it very personal. Here to appraise those more special pieces, Rocho expert Alistair Nichol. If you're on Broadway, I imagine the, the, the greatest accolade you can get is winning a Tony, and next to that, surely it's being drawn by Al Hirschfeld. Yes. Absolutely. I had bought this. I was in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, uh, the first revival with Matthew Broderick. As soon as I saw the drawing in the paper, I said, I got to go buy it, and uh, so I did. This is a lithograph, right. and that's me right there. I was going to ask, which was you? There you are. <laughs> I'm there. Arms raised a lot. Hedy LaRue, and I've got, a, I think, a couple of Ninas in me, because that was what Hirschfeld was known for, putting the, his wife's name in the... Well, that was his daughter. It's oh. his daughter, Nina. Oh, yep. there you go. Yep. And then um, I did Paul Simon's The Cape Man on Broadway, and that's where I met this gentleman. This fellow here? Yes. So that worked out quite well. Yes, it really did. <laughs> I bought this maybe about 17 years ago as a gift to Ruben for, uh, I think it was Christmas, I got it from I don't him. remember what it, when it was, but it surprised the heck out of me because <laughs> um, I, I thought that Paul would have bought it Mark Anthony, I think Mark would have bought it, or yeah. Ernita, or Renoli, I mean, somebody. I thought that was gone. I well, mean, that's the original. I think I went to get this cleaned or something. I went to the gallery, and I said, do you by any chance have the Cape Man, Hirschfeld? And I was shocked that they still had the, the original. It was my only Broadway play that I ever worked in, a musical or play, uh, the Cape Man. And I'm very proud of that, and I always feel that it was such a wonderful opportunity, but and you I met me. I met you. Best of all. But also, but also the fact that I got a Hirschfeld uh, drawing, I thought like, my God. You're a legend. What man. an honor. I know, absolutely. And this is you here? Yeah. I had a little more hair then. They're just wonderful things. And he was such an amazing artist. I mean, they, they called him the, yes. the wine king, you know, and you can just, the line is amazing, the way it flows. And they, they, they're so characterful. And um, it's just, it's great to be immortalized by an artist like Hirschfeld. So have you ever given any thought to the, the, the values? I mean, you, you bought them, so you've got some kind of idea. I think the lithograph was somewhere around 1200, 1300, something sounds, like sounds that. Sounds about right, yeah. And the original, I really don't quite remember. Yeah. I think it was somewhere in the ballpark between like three and three and five thousand dollars. You couldn't let something like that get away. I mean, no, if you, if you, I had to get it. If you had the chance, it. you have to get it. I Absolutely. had to get it, yes. Yeah. It seems silly to even talk about values because these are not things that you're ever going to part with. No. But yes, I mean, I guess if I was insuring that now, I'd probably be up somewhere north of 10,000. Know? Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I would think so. And you know, and that one, I would think if you were yeah, paying for one now, retail, it might be 2,000 or so. It's an addition of, I think, 100. Yes. You know, so there's another 99 of them out there. Wow, that's interesting. Ruben's interests include more than just fine art. An avid comic collector for many years, he has amassed an archive of thousands of comic books and hundreds of pieces of comic book art. Later, collectibles expert Leela Dunbar digs into his stash to uncover some of the most coveted comics in the world. I try to be, without success, um, sparse in my 
collection. <laughs> but. <laughs> Ruben Blade's own personal comic book museum contains a wide variety of artwork, ranging from original illustrations to comic strips to first edition comic books. To evaluate just a fraction of this eclectic archive, Ruben met with Collectibles Authority, Leela Dunbar. This is like the room of my swain news, Ruben. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Yeah, this is the room where I turn to be 10 years old when I get up here. <laughs> well, like, this is Raboy with uh, Flash Gordon. Mac Raboy, he took over for Alex Raymond, the originator, when uh, Raymond went into the service. That's right. Yeah, that's a great piece. I mean, the most sought after ones are Alex Raymond, but Mac Raboy is also, particularly his early ones from the 40s, and this is probably somewhere between five and $10,000. Oh, wow. Well. And this is a Frazetta, Frank Frazetta. Oh, Frank Frazetta, he's the godfather of fantasy. Although I tell you, looking at this, I think it's more of a nightmare for the snake at least. <laughs> but that's spectacular. He's best known for, of course, his cover work, which can sell into the millions of dollars. Your drawing here probably is in the range of twenty-five dollars to $35,000. Yeah, wow. So this is the original artwork for Punk Magazine. Oh my goodness, Punk Magazine? And who is that? Lou Reed. They call him the grandfather of, of the, well, Punk is a picture of Lou and me were working together. Wow, that's not CGBGs, right? <laughs> that's, this is where it, it, the guy did the interview for, for, for him. Right. Actually, it was there, CBGBs. But what year is this? No, this is 1987, but we're at, at Lou's house doing the music and he recorded, we recorded together. Wow. Love Lou, miss him. Well, this is great, because this magazine really brought punk into the mainstream. Yeah. You know, it wasn't well known before that. And I gotta say, the value on this, especially with Lou on the cover and looking a little bit like Frankenstein here, because he was such a monster in the industry, I think you're looking at probably somewhere between twenty and $25,000. Yeah, well. You know, for that, I think we can take a walk on the wild side. <laughs> yeah. This is action. One in uh, Detective 27, the first appearance of Superman in Action One, and Detective Comics' first appearance of Batman. I knew about the, the comics, but I, and I was collecting comics, but I wasn't really going for the keys, as they call them. I was just a, a completist. I was just completing runs of comics. And then one day I, th I thought, you know what? I really would like to have these books because of their historical significance. So I got them together about 10 or 15 years ago. What do you think of when you think of Superman? First of all, he was like a, an immigrant, a force for good, like I believe most immigrants are. And Batman? Batman is the same, although Batman is darker. In Batman, there's not just the, the fight against evil, but also I think a, a, a desire to redeem. I think you're absolutely spot on when you're talking about Superman, because let's face it, he, he changed the world completely in 1938. And he's the first comic book superhero. Yeah. And he created basically the comic book industry. Superman was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster in the basement of, of Jerry Siegel's house in Cleveland. And what I find fascinating, they originally had him as a villain in 1933. And they realized after a while that this wasn't going to work, this comic strip. Heroes have longevity, and, and we can see that because both of these superheroes have lasted more than eight decades. This is Action Comics 1. This is the most important comic book in the history of comic books because it is the dawn of the golden age with Superman. And it's interesting because when Detective Comics issued it in 1938, they printed 200,000 copies, but they didn't know because there are actually 11 stories in the Action Comics book. It just happened that Superman is the lead and on the cover. Mm. And when they sold out of 200,000 copies, it still took them a couple of months to figure out it was Superman. The creators of Batman are Bob Kane and Bill Finger. All four of these creators were inspired, interestingly enough, by Douglas Fairbanks and the Mask of Zorro. It's in this time period of the 1930s where you've got the rise of Hitler. These creators were all Jewish immigrants, mm -hmm. and the fate of our world was really hanging in the balance. So why not create these superheroes who are going to give inspiration and hope to generations of people? What did you pay for these? 
For this one, at the time, I think I paid about 55000 This one cost me less. It was about 40, 45. Today, believe it or not, you're looking at probably about 100 copies of each that mm -hmm. exist. These have been restored. Mm -hmm. If you had a book that was in poor condition, this would bring it up to a, a much better, you know, higher level, much more presentable. Also, it would raise the value up, mm -hmm. but not nearly as much as one that's in original condition. Mm -hmm. We're looking at detective comics today. Now, this is graded as 7.0 on a scale of 1 to 10 in restored condition. An estimate on this, an auction estimate, is going to be somewhere between two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars today. Oh wow! Well, that's a lot more than I would have imagined. And that—that's <laughs> quite the layaway plan now. <laughs> well, no, the guy who sold it must be hitting himself on the, <laughs> the, against the wall right now. No, uh, but then we all did that at some point. Well, but this is great to know. If this was an original. Oh. Now you're looking eight hundred to nine hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and action is the same. I mean, this is the second most important comic. This is the whole, the ultimate holy grail, most important of the golden age comics. This is graded lower than Detective. It's five point five, mm -hmm. but it's a more important comic. So again, you're looking at an auction estimate, probably somewhere at least one hundred seventy-five thousand to two hundred twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. And again, if this were in 5.5 in an original condition, you're looking at 800 to 900,000. Mm -hmm. My socks go up and down <laughs> uh, of joy. <laughs> Thank you, socks. No, but you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I'm glad I did it. Mm -hmm. I just, um, I'm, a, like, like, I'm a collector, like I said, a completist. So it's really wonderful to know that at least um, I, I'm helping protect the books as well. But at the same time, they're gonna help me in the future. Not just me, my son, my, my family. So it's good, good to know. Thank you for making us a part of this. Uh, we had such a wonderful oh, time. Oh yeah, we're really excited. We, we were, we're so excited when we, yeah, <laughs> when we got the word that you guys were coming here. So we're, yeah. it's very exciting. So thank you fun. very much, everybody who's watching. Uh, I hope that you have fun with us as well.